This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. This year marks the first anniversary of the white supremacist neo-Nazi rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, the deadly Unite the Right rally protesting Charlottesville decision to remove a statue of a Confederate general from a downtown park. General Robert E. Lee became the biggest and deadliest white supremacist rally in U.S. history in decades. Um, we are joined by A.C. Thompson. The documentary he did, the correspondent for Frontline PBS, is called Documenting Hate, Charlottesville, premiering tonight on PBS stations across the country. In part one of our discussion, we discussed the documentary. Um, as this documentary comes out, you were in Portland, Oregon, um, for yet another uh, white supremacist rally, and one took place in Berkeley, California, as well. Describe what you saw, AC. Right. Actually, you know, I would I would revise that, and I would say that it was perhaps a fascist rally in Portland, but not a white supremacist rally, and that's sort of another new wrinkle in the the far right movement. So the groups that were in Portland, they wanted you to know, hey, look, we're not racist. And they and many of them had uh, leaders who were people of color. Uh, but they also said, hey, we're really into fascist characters like Pinochet. The first guy I met had a huge shirt on that said Pinochet did nothing wrong. And other people uh, had shirts on that would say things like right wing death squad. And so these are these are what I would call multicultural, multi-ethnic fascist groups that they um, laud characters like Pinochet. Uh, they laud characters like the dictator, the, dic Chile, the, the Chilean dictator who killed hand. tens of thousands of his opponents and whose folks often threw them out of helicopters. Uh, you know, they they are fans of folks like the the Indonesian dictator Suharto, someone that you've studied very much. Uh, and and they would say about somebody like Suharto, I don't care that he's he's Asian. I'm not prejudiced against Asian people. I just like that he was involved in slaughtering tens of thousands of suspect hundreds of thousands of suspected communists. Yeah. So that's the kind of these are the kind of groups that we're talking about. It's a new wrinkle on the fascist movement and on and they're not explicitly white supremacists. They're a little bit different. And so talk about how police dealt with them versus the anti fascist protesters. You know, what I, what I saw in Portland was sort of a response to, to Charlottesville, that they were trying to keep these two groups separated. And unlike we had seen in other events, um, they were trying to keep these groups from fighting, which police had failed at in many cities before. But I think from what I saw, it seemed like the, the group that was getting the harsher police treatment seemed to be the leftist faction, the anti-racist faction. And I think the concern, I would say, in Portland is that police were using less lethal munitions and firing them in what seemed to be somewhat indiscriminate ways at the, the, the counter protesters, the leftist protesters, in a way that really could have seriously injured people. And the same was happened in Berkeley. This, this <laughs> similar thing happened in Berkeley. I wasn't there, but that's the reports that, that I'm hearing. And, and, and I didn't document it, so I don't know all the details there. Wasn't a guy shot in the head in Portland? That I have seen the photos, and, and my colleagues were actually at that scene when it happened, and it sounded terrifying. I was on a, in a different part of town when that incident happened, and it looked, but that looked scary, the photos, absolutely. And do you think there's any relation to this crackdown on the counter-protesters more harshly than the protesters? and Donald Trump being president. You know, I, I, it's hard to say. A city like Portland is not a, is not a place where Donald Trump has a lot of sway, I would say. Um, a city like Berkeley is not a place where, where there are a lot of Donald Trump fans. I think really um, part of what we're seeing here is just a long time um, problem with sort of police adjusting to the dynamics of this current political moment and still trying to actually effectively police these situations um, that we have, that we're going to continue to have, where you have very intense standoffs between uh, people on the left and people on the right who are concerned about this particular moment. Are you saying these fascists are the Proud Boys? I, I, here's what I'm saying. Patriot Prayer uh, and the Proud Boys uh, are extreme right groups that I don't think they're, they're not white supremacist groups, they're, they're just not. But they have a lot more in common with certain fascist movements that we've seen over time than, uh, say, other groups. Um, before we go, you've been doing a lot of reporting on Blaise Bernstein, the murder of uh, this young man. Explain who he is and how it fits into this whole movement. So, so 
Blaise Bernstein is, uh, was a uh, um, gay Jewish college student who was from Orange County, California. And when he uh, disappeared and was murdered earlier this year, my colleagues and I th thought, hmm, that, that looks like a case we should probably be following. You know, we don't know yet, but it looks suspicious. When we started getting more details about it, we kept investigating. And eventually we found out that, hey, the guy that has been charged by the police, Sam Woodward, with the murder, is a member of the most extreme neo-Nazi group in the country, Adam Waffen Division. And he spent all of his time in the Adam Waffen chats. Now, Adam Waffen, A-T-O-M-W-A-F-F-E-N. A-T-O-M-W-A-F-F-E-N. -A 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 German for? German for nuclear weapons division. I believe if, if you were German, you would say something like Atom Waffen, something like that. Um, but yeah, so he was a member of this incredibly rabid, incredibly extreme uh, group that's dedicated to domestic terrorism and the overthrow of the United States government. The man who's charged with this murder. The man who's charged with this murder. Um, virulently uh, anti-gay, virulently anti-trans, virulently anti-Semitic, anti-people of color. I mean, really, really intense group. And Vasily Pistolas, uh, the leader of this. No, he was, Vasily, Vasily Pistolas was a chapter leader for the group in North and South Carolina, uh, but he was another character uh, who was a key figure in the group. Uh, the, the group's lovely leader uh, goes by the handle Rape. And his name's John Cameron Denton, but he uses the handle Rape. And who is he? He's a, a Texas uh, neo-Nazi based uh, outside of Houston. And you're also investigating him? Yes. He will be in our second film, our follow-up film that'll air uh, on PBS in the fall. Finally, one of the issues we didn't deal as much with is the whole misogynist part right. of these movements. And if you could talk more about it, you touch on it in the documentary. Right. It's really, it's really interesting because the earlier waves of, of white supremacist groups were highly patriarchal, but they weren't openly uh, and violently misogynist. And I think this wave of white supremacist groups um, have even worse sort of gender politics, and a lot of them are just absolutely aggressively anti-female. And, and that's the kind of thing that you get with a guy who goes by the handle rape. Well, we'll do part two of this soon as you're doing part two of your documentary. It's coming out soon? Uh, in the fall, October, November. I want to thank you, A.C. Thompson, correspondent for Frontline PBS, reporter for ProPublica, his documentary documenting hate Charlottesville, premiering tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern, on PBS stations around the country and at pbs.org slash frontline. To see part one of our discussion, go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.